video came to me an email from someone who's asking, how do you bind off stitches in the middle of a row and keep your count correct? And thank you for the suggestion. Keep those coming. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos. And this is a great suggestion because binding off stitches in the middle of a row isn't as straightforward as you think it would be, but there are little trick you can do to make sure you've got it right. Uh, a reason you might want to bind off in the middle of a row is if you're knitting a sweater, for example, the front of a sweater, and when you get to the, you get up to the neck, you're going to want to keep knitting stitches on one shoulder, bind off for the neck, and keep knitting stitches for the other shoulder, and you'll knit the two shoulders separately and then come back to the next stitches, the next stitches later to um, pick it up and make the collar. That's one idea, and um, there are other reasons I know that uh, Knitted toys end up having you bind off in the middle of a row several times because there's so much shaping going on. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to do that, so let's go ahead and take a look at the work. So I have a basket weave stitch here, and I actually have it marked off to what I want. Eight stitches on the outside and binding off ten stitches in the middle. And you don't need to put markers like this, I just want to make it clear. So I am going to knit up these eight stitches on the outside so those are the ones I want to keep live and everything inside these markers I want to bind off so this is going to be my first bound off stitch but the we have to think about it differently than you might be thinking the whole bind off process starts with knit two so I'm going to knit two and then bind one stitch off over the other, and that is one stitch bound off. Knit another, two stitches bound off, three, four, five. You can see it helps to not have very many distractions while you're doing this. I usually like to have the house quiet and I can count. Six, seven, eight, nine. I actually want to bind off ten, but I've hit my marker. So let's think about this for a minute. It really isn't that, um, that confusing when you remember that we had to start by knitting two at the beginning here to get one bound off stitch. So to get ten, I'm going to have to knit into the eight stitches that I don't want bound off. It's going to make sense here when I show you this. I have a stitch on the needle that's going to count with these stitches over here. I'm going to remove this marker, knit one, and bind off. And I'm just going to slide this stitch back over here so we can look at it and count it. Because my goal was eight stitches, ten bound off, and eight stitches. And over here at the beginning, I had to knit two to bind off the first one. And here at the end, I had to knit into the eight that I want to leave to get, um, to get all ten bound off. And the stitch that was on my right needle counts with these. So two, four, six, eight. The count ended up perfectly. You just kind of start slow here at the end, and you have to work one more stitch than, se than, than seems intuitive. Um, when you get to the left side of the bind off. Have, uh, putting markers like that and keeping good count of what you're doing is another way to make sure, but just don't freak out when you get to the end and you're actually working into the stitches that you know you don't want to bind off. Anyway, I hope that helps. Good luck.